I'm Trisha with Easy E-Mini Trade, and we use a handful of setups to take conservative entries to trade the S&P E-Mini. Um, if you'd like to get a little more information on the setups, you can go to www.easyeminitrade.com. I'm going to go over um, a few things from Friday and also go over the daily chart and show why this was such a difficult week um, for many to trade. And the reason it's been a difficult week to trade, I mean, we had, um, leading into Friday, um, some probably took that um, sell-off on Thursday. It was after 3.30, so, you know, it's not something that I'm willing to do. But just the trades that um, that we took, with the exclusion of anybody doing any range trading on their own, um, we took seven trades this week leading into Friday, and two of those were losers. It was just a difficult time because when you look at the daily chart, um, here's Friday and Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, etc. And you can see that we are going sideways here. And so what happens is, yes, we are in an overall uptrend, but we're consolidating here. So what happens is when we remain in the same price area for, you know, more than a few bars, we have to take into consideration all the previous support and resistance areas that are created within each of these bars and you know it winds up being the same areas over and over day after day you have um, 1100 here then you have 1102 1107 um, 1109 1112 1115 and so on so they it becomes an area that is constantly um, testing the support and resistance that's created each previous day. So what happens is then you have a lot of reference areas and when you're taking a setup, if you're taking something right above or below those areas and those areas are going to be in your way, you wind up likely price is going to bounce or pull back in those areas. So it just makes it difficult if you don't have a lot of room to those areas um, to take any long continued move because you're not going to get one. Um, you know, you're just basically grabbing um, three quarters or a point when you can. And I wanted to point this out. Going into Friday, here was Friday, um, we had pointed out the day before. We start out every day in the morning um, before the chat room gets going looking at our daily chart and our 60 minute chart. We pick out all the relevant areas of um, you know, price level, support and resistance, where we definitely want to pay attention to. And we, um, you know, we could see this happening. You have higher highs here in price. Here's a high, and then here you have a higher high. Let's not count Friday, because this was before Friday even happened. And so we have our stochastic on here, and you can see that this is moving lower. So you have a higher high here. Well, this is failing to make an equal or higher high. And so that's divergence. So that would lead you to believe that you're going to get a price pullback. Whether that happens or not obviously um, remains to be seen. We'll just have to see. But it's still continuing in that same um, you know, fashion. Now you have a higher high from Friday, while here you, know, you still have a lower high continuing lower. So if you just look at the previous um, price action when we do, you know, when we have started to move, we go higher, we consolidate, we pull back, we go higher, we consolidate, we pull back, we go higher, we consolidate, we pull back, higher, consolidate, pull back, higher, consolidate, so now are we going to get a pullback? Again, remains to be seen, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. So we had that huge sell-off on um, Thursday at 338, you can see it just, it died. Once we got below, um, that support area that had been holding up all day, it it just died. And um, again, that was after 3:38. So nothing I was interested in taking. Um, somebody could have taken um, one of our our Keltner channel continuation setups, just knowing that there were some areas below you where you might have paused. But um, obviously, it worked out if if somebody took it. But after 3:30, I'm typically not going to trade. Um, but interestingly enough, before we even opened on Friday, we had recaptured that whole entire sell-off um, that occurred on Thursday. And this was based on, you know, news coming out at 8.30. So um, that um, propelled the market higher before the open. And so, like I said, basically recaptured the entire um, sell-off from Thursday. So here's um, a setup that occurred at, um, it was actually at 9.36 would have been entered in on um, at 9.37, entering in a quarter above this bar. Knowing that you've got the um, high from the previous day above you, 
and so that would be your target obviously we're able to get more than that um, I actually got um, um, I got my plus one and I was actually just expecting that we'd get to 117 um, 118 is an area that we have been watching for quite a while we said if we got through um, you know the 112 25 um, area and the uh, 115 area then our next likely area was going to be um, the 11 18 and you know that's basically where we got to a little higher obviously but I got plus one plus two and then I was stopped out just under here um, my stop I moved it on my final third to um, 116.75 so wound up with a point and a half on my final third so that worked out fine and so when we came up to the area that we had picked out as our resistance area of 118 um, obviously we did break that we got up to 119 but when we came back under the high from Thursday I was thinking okay I'm willing to give this a try if we can close under this middle line now I typically won't go counter trend but I was willing if we got back under this high from the previous day um, I was willing to give it a shot so we got closed under the middle line I actually gave it one more um, one more bar to see if it would fill or not like if it would stay under the middle line and so entering in a quarter under this bar never filled on the next bar so actually um, I still was willing to take it as long as I stayed under this 117 and under the middle line so I actually um, moved my entry under this bar here and got filled on this bar so had to um, wait a few minutes before it actually started to move and my my target was only down to um, this previous area of support and resistance um, I didn't know if all I would get would be to the lower line but even so that still gave me um, about a little more than a point to shoot for if, if all I got to was the lower channel um, if I was able to get to this um, this price level that was created overnight then obviously I'd get a little more out of it and so um, I got my plus one and then it you know quickly broke below this area and got a plus two very quickly and then I moved my stop to my entry and um, you know basically it held on forever and ever and ever and um, I finally did take it um, at plus one on my final third because I got tired of waiting I know that's ridiculous because I would have been in this trade I would have stayed in this trade because I would have never been stopped out my entry was 116.25 and it never traded up to my entry so on that final third if I hadn't lost um, my patience you know then obviously I would have you know captured this next move without ever having to re-enter um, so anyway again just depends on how you want to manage it um, my entry was right at 10 o'clock um, this bar was 959 when that bar finished it, it basically got filled at 10 o'clock so from that point until it finally started to move again um, you know it was it was 50 minutes later so um, not typically going to wait that long but you know everybody's different the next trade that I took was right here under this bar and this was at 10:55 in the morning you actually could have gotten in under this bar if you wanted to you closed outside the channel but we're at a very strong um, support and resistance area of 11 12 25 and we know that every day that's been um, a really strong area because that was actually our our high on our um, daily chart for a while and I'll go ahead and I'll show you that you know, basically this is our one um, 11 12 25 resistance area so we know you know coming and going every time we pass that it until we can stay closed above it that that is going to be an area that we have to pay attention to so somebody taking this just under that support area um, for me that's not something that I would be interested in because it could easily you know hit this and bounce because we know it's a strong support area um, you wouldn't have got filled on the next bar anyway